Hi, this lesson will focus on the introduction. This will be the introduction to uh, picking in the Flatirons Refraction Statics program. We're going to open up an existing project and I'm going to bring up Demo 1, which is the project we've built in previous lessons and we've already examined this geometry. So I'm going to open this project. And I'm going to uh, kill some of these windows here and bring up a pick window. So we're just going to bring up the single record pick window. And let's expand the size of this. So this is the way the program, uh, the window uh, first comes up. Now let me orient you to uh, it may come up slightly different depending on how you exit it and whatever. But let me just orient you. It's uh, very easy to modify and it doesn't always come up the same way. So you should be able to understand it no matter how it comes up. But let's uh, look at the over, over here on the upper left. We see this blank window here. At this point, because we have no picks, once we start to create picks and get a solution, this will be where your geometry vectors will be. And these are what the program uses to help us compute uh, changes in geometry if they're needed. Down here, you can see we have um, our elevations plotted. Uh, we're in a shot plane. Uh, this is the way you pick your plane is uh, here. So right now the default is a shot plane. And uh, this is interactive, so it's map driven. And when you click, you see the, uh, the shot and its, and its receivers. And when you move your mouse over the traces here, you see a vector on the map to the left there showing the which receivers are, are being pointed at. Of course, we can change what we're plotting here. Let's say we want to plot based on pick fold. Again, the program behaves the same way, but, ex but under the underlying map now is pick fold. <clears throat> we can uh, change the plane. We can change the plane to be receiver plane. And again, the same thing happens here. When we move the mouse, we see which shots are associated with each receiver here. You see a plot up here. This is offset being mapped, but you can map anything you want by right-clicking. You can say, I want to plot receiver elevation, for example. And since I'm in a receiver plane, the receiver elevation is constant. But if I go to the shot plane and click on a shot, the receiver elevations are much more useful to us. The uh, Let's go through uh, these little symbols up here. So this is the base map view. So this is the current, this is the initial view. Here is how I want to navigate. So I can uh, actually, I can navigate even by the shot ID here. So I can go, I can click just based on this numerical value here. And of course I can scroll up and down if I wanted to go to a certain shot ID, I could uh, go go to it directly here. So the uh, so that's that could be useful, and we can actually navigate. We can say I want to go from I want to go navigate line number point number and go descending, and then when I go next gather uh, based on some keys over here, I'll explain in a second. We will actually go to the next in that particular order. Right now, I don't have anything. Um, I, I don't really have anything chosen there. The um, the next dialog or the next uh, options are is this little funnel and this funnel is a um, it's a symbol for creating a processing sequence so the idea is that this is supposed to everything's supposed to channel or funnel into through this funnel here our traces are going to go through a sequence of, of steps here so for example let's say we want to do add a filter we want to do a, a a bandpass filter and let's say we want to uh, do, let's say we will accept the defaults. Now let's say we also want to do an AGC. So we do amplitude um, uh, AGC. Okay, so here's our AGC, but you say, wow, that's kind of uh, loud. I don't like the properties of that. So you can do things like, for example, you can actually change the, the AGC in real time here. Likewise, with the, well, the filler, uh, they're just set parameters, but we're going to make these uh, options too for, uh, for uh, changing those inter interactively. 
And then let's say we also want to, uh, let's see what other options we have here. We can uh, apply move out. So we can apply a linear move out to our traces. So in this case, 61, 69 feet per second is, is a good move out. Uh, what other options do we have here? We can measure trace uh, noise. We can uh, shift uh, if we have statics or elevation statics. So let's look at elevation statics. So let's say I want to apply elevation statics. When I apply the, uh, well, no, that's, I don't want that. The velocity is what I want here. And we don't have a lot of elevation change, but you can see, I mean, even though it looks like there is some significant elevation, as you can see, it's only about uh, 15 feet. However, if I, when I'm changing this, if I'm, if I'm talking about sand dunes or whatever, in this case I'm not, um, we would see a, a significant change here. What's nice is you can do this interactively. So there's no reason to just type in a number and push apply and then and try another number, whatever you can. So here's, here's this funnel of uh, processes. And we can save this. Let's say I like this. So I'm going to, um, I want to save this. And, and you can actually manipulate all these two, but I'm going to save this sequence and I'll call this uh, my, uh, I'll, I'll just call, I'll just save that sequence and uh, I can retrieve it later. Or I can save it to a new file and call it um, Chuck's uh, favorite sequence. Uh, pick pick sequence, save, and then later I can retrieve it, Chuck's favorite pick sequence, and bring it that way. Okay, so uh, I, I would expect, uh, again, that many, your, the users, the, the, the strong users will end up having many of these saved, and uh, a supervisor of a group might have some of these to make sure everything's being picked consistently, you would have that those uh, sequences saved and distributed to the users in your group that, that are running this program on the, on the data for a project, for example. So that way you can confirm that they are uh, picking consistently. Now, the other thing I have not uh, talked about yet is uh, over here. We have several options over here. Picker controls. This is how you control how the program behaves. So for example, you can see like, for example, F, um, if I right click, if I click here, I can um, associate the letter F with kill right, add left, add right, add both. Let's say add both, let's try that. So F is add both. So if I say F here, if I move my mouse here and I type the letter F, it picks in both directions. Now you can see I have G as add left. So the letter G, if I go here, move my mouse here and I type letter G, 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 and G, um, picking to the left. And all this thing is doing is it's tracking an event. It's pretty brain dead. It's not looking at amplitudes. It's just going, I'm picking a peak. See, here's my pick type. I'm picking a peak in this case. So it's trying to find its way across a series of peaks. So if I zoom in here with the right mouse and I zoom in here, you can see, for example, when, the, when I was tracking along here and it got to here, got to here, got to here, it started to track down this way. And then I reset it here. So let me do G here and you'll see that I'll, I'll go here and I'll push G. You can see it got off onto this lower track. If I wanted to get onto this upper track, I could go here and as you can see, it just follow and find its way across. So it's a pretty brain dead algorithm, but the nice thing about it is it's simple. So you know exactly why it's doing things. It's not trying to figure out which are the higher amplitudes, lower amplitudes, and make, it's not trying to do anything behind the scenes to make more clever decisions because when, when we, we find in practice and when that happens that um, you're never, um, you never really understand why it's doing it. You wonder which part of the algorithm is causing it to make the decisions it is. In this case, all it's doing is finding the closest thing. Now the other thing to keep in mind is when I do G here, for example, uh, you'll see that it only it only um, can find that option, that operation to the zoom window. So for example, if I go here and type G and then come out, you'll see that it limited that picking to the window itself. That way you only get what you you only get what you see here. So you don't want it to be going uh, um, across a whole record outside of that window. 
in a way that you don't expect. So, uh, and then when you unzoom, you find out it's it's messed up all your picks uh, on this upper leg here. So again, if I just want to get uh, clean this up, I go here, and I know that it's not going to mess up my picks over here. Um, there's other options here. Pick on zero. Uh, I'll show you that later. Um, this is not useful at this point, but it's going to pick the closest thing to a zero time. Um, I don't. I I have add right. I have add left. It's up to you how you map these. Uh, pick zero time. That's pick the closest thing to zero. Uh, I have that twice here again. I like to associate it with Z. Um, and what it does, let me just show you. It types, it picks the closest thing to zero. So when there's certain processes we can do later to actually move our, our event close to zero. And at that point, that pick to zero, pick zero time comes in handy. Um, other things are next group. The space bar is associated with next group. That means when I go next group, when I have my on my uh, mouse over this window, over the trace part of the window, I go to the next group. If I have it over here and I go next group, you don't see anything happen. If I have it down here, nothing happens. But here or here, anything over in here will go next, will go to the next gather. And if I look on my base map, you'll see that I'm marching through my data in the order of the shots as they were input. And then the navigation, we call the navigation allows us to change the way we move through our data. And we'll talk about that in another thing, another uh, lesson. So before I go uh, this, let me just go through the rest of these buttons here. Uh, this is for locking an axis. So for example, if I wanted to lock the time axis, uh, in this case, the defaults are minus 300 to 300. Let's say I want to do it minus 100 to 300. So if I just type in a number and then push enter, and then... Um, view trace samples, you must first um, create a hotkey for view trace data. So let's see if we have one. Here's view trace samples, actually, is what we really meant to say there. So if I type the letter N, so if I come here, if I say N, I can actually look at the samples and scroll down. So if I see a, a spike or something, I, I might want to find that spike and uh, see what its value actually is. And then this here is for creating snapshots. Uh, if you're creating PowerPoints and things you're trying to present, like what the traces look like uh, on various shots around the survey, you can go here, call it something, uh, and then you can create snapshots and it'll, it'll, it'll start to create snapshots every time you go to a, a different gatherer or whatever. Okay, so I'm not gonna go into that. That's beyond the, the scope of this particular lesson. Um, the last thing I wanna show, well, the, so we got the funnels. So before I leave, I wanna go through the rest of these. Grouping is, uh, right now there's no grouping, but if I want to, I can go by receiver number. And over here, uh, here's each of the receiver lines, so I can navigate through them that way. Or, what I have my keys here, and I can go next group or previous group. And next group and previous group, as the names imply, or relate to the grouping. So if I have grouping off, grouping happens to be my whole gather. So it's the same thing as pushing the space bar. So I'm pushing my left arrow, my right arrow, and I'm navigating through my data that way. This here is what I want to be on the horizontal axis right now. It's um, the axis is um, it's just the uh, traces in the order they came in on, but let me, let's select uh, trace offset. So now I have, um, I'm ordered by offset, and you can see the offset uh, reflected here in the, numerically and then if I want to I could do uh, like say trace azimuth and here's the azimuth scale up here zero is uh, east-west for us and um, so I'm looking as mutually so let's look at my base map here so you can see as I move around the left to right of my traces if you look at the map on the left you'll see that I'm just scrolling directionally around my traces or my receivers in this case um, visible traces this is a this is a way of uh, for example in here uh, I have pick times that are uh, red and they're large I could change the size of this here like I say I make that five and change the color to be green so now I have a smaller green symbol That's 
I don't like that one, but I would I like the red larger ones. But you don't want to have your symbols so large that they're they're uh, hiding the actual events. So, uh, but anyway, here's how you change those, and then um, trace here. Um, the, the the thumbs up is indicating like here's the ones we we like. So here's the ones I want to plot in this case. So I, if I had branch assignment uh, later, I can limit by branch assignment. Let's say I want to display uh, based on uh, offset. So I can say I just uh, the maximum offset on these are about six thousand feet. Let's say I want to see the inner three thousand. So I can say limit by trace. So now I've cleaned up this uh, display here. If I display by offset um, on the axis here, I can uh, plot by offset. And you can see the range goes from 0 to about 3,000. So now let's turn off that. Let's go from 3,000 to 6,000. And we'll see the axis change accordingly up top there on the, on the above the traces. Enter. So now I'm looking at from 3,000 to 6,000. And this axis relates to the traces that it's seeing. So I can actually lock the axis. Um, so I can say, I just want to, I want to plot from uh, 0 to, or to 7,000. Whoops, wrong axis. <laughs> um, well, in that case, I'm changing the time. 0 to uh, 300. And um, as you can see, this is unrehearsed, so I do make mistakes sometimes, and it's not worth going back and doing, changing it. But I'm going to change the, the uh, horizontal axis to go from 0 to 7,000. So, so now you can see I'm, I'm plotting my traces from 3,000 to 6,000, so I'm only accepting those. But now let's say when I go from 0 to, to uh, 3,000, push Enter, my traces are falling in the to the left of that plot. Okay, and again, of course, I can, if I unlock the axis, the axis uh, expands to the values in the traces themselves. So sometimes it's handy to actually lock this axis, gives you a better perspective on where you're at in your data. Okay, so I'm gonna stop this lesson at this point, and the next one I'm gonna talk about, uh, this pick window in the context of other pick windows, and and looking at picking and killing picks and all this. So at this point, you know how to configure your, your window um, and make it useful, get it set up for the way you like to pick your data.